Okay, so I want to go a little bit uh, backwards because you said that eating high saturated fat diets, especially things like coconut oil um, and potentially even olive oil can actually negatively affect your brain. In the world today, we are told over and over and over again, when you go on Google, you go on Facebook, you go all over the place, that coconut oil is actually good for your brain and actually required for your brain. And then a lot of people are also saying that eating fish oil is necessary because it's high in omega-3 fatty acids and omega-3 fatty acids are required for optimal cognition. What is going on here? Why is there such conflicting advice? Um, because people have to sell things, right? Um, so, and and they, have, they need following. So they have to say something controversial like, the brain is made of fat, therefore you need to eat fat. That, that's the most ridiculous thing you can ever imagine. Yeah, explain, um, and explain why, because this is something that I think yeah, people so get confused by. The brain, ha, brain is, has significant fat content, absolutely, because of the white matter disease and all that. But the brain takes care of its own fat utilization. It creates its own fat. It does never need any fat. Yeah, we need omega. The one type of fat that we need is omega-3, which we, we, we get in, in, in many, many different ways. We don't need fish oil. We don't... We, we, and I'll tell you what we think is why fish and fish oil are, can be especially damaging to the brain, being that it's most sensitive organ. Any amount of toxins like uh, mercury or lead, any of those can damage the brain significantly more than any other organ because it affects it at the level of cognition. Liver doesn't have cognition. Liver can withstand damage and do the same function. But the brain, when it's, when it's affected by toxins like mercury, it is damaged permanently and damaged pretty significantly. So uh, we, we worry about the source of omega-3. Um, um, so th that's where that's coming from. And then the idea that fat, you should eat fat. The most vascular organ in your body by far is the brain. If you connect the capillaries in the brain end to end, I mean, the, somebody had the time uh, to, to do the math on this, it's 400 miles of vessels. 400 miles of endothelial cells. By the time that fat travels through that, even if the, the theory is true that you need fat, which actually is completely false, the damage that will be done at the, at the uh, vascular level would be profound. And we know it is. We see this often that people who have high saturated fat levels or you have high, uh, high cholesterol and uh, saturated fat, then they have cognitive decline. I mean, several studies that we've quoted many times. 53% higher risk of uh, dementia by, because they had you know, uh, higher cholesterol uh, food. Yeah. So this idea just because the brain's got slightly more fat content that you should feed it fat is not based on the fact that uh, the brain does not need ex exogenous fat. It's, it's wrong because by the time the fat even gets there, it's damaging the most sensitive organ, 400 miles of it, the vasculature to it. So in multiple level and... The insulin sensitivity, we know that fat actually affects insulin sensitivity more than, any, uh, more than even sugar. So you actually damage that process of the en most energy-hungry organ even more so. So at three levels, it's wrong. I want to add something to that because it's important. So, uh, we're actually writing something about that because of all the fat we're, nonsense yeah, and we're the doing a confusion talk on. That, is, that is being spread. So you know, it's also important to mention that it's the type of fat that matters, you know. Saturated fat is a no-no. We know for a fact that saturated fat, high consumption of saturated fat has been associated with peripheral and brain insulin resistance. So eating meat, chicken, dairy, cheese, all of that actually causes brain insulin resistance and, and you know, um, further damage. As far as you know, the percentage of fat in the brain is concerned, it's highly exaggerated because there has been some miscalculations of adding the water content into it as well. So when people say 70 or 60% of the brain is fat, it's actually much, much less than that. The other thing that's very important to note is that the brain does not store fat and then use it for energy. The brain actually creates cholesterol and all of the fat in the brain is structural fat. 
So it's the stability of the cell walls and the synaptic connections in the myelin. The brain has no capacity to use that fat as energy. So we don't have to supply fat to the brain to begin with. The only type of fat that it needs on a regular basis is DHA and EPA, omega-3 fatty acids, which we can get from plant sources like chia seeds, flax seeds, and avocados. And the, the, the omega-3 fatty yeah. acids that come from, from fish you know, there is such a danger of consuming heavy metals. The only thing that we check in clinic is mercury, maybe sometimes lead, but we now know that it has so much more. And then there's another issue of all the TMAOs that come with it as well. So all in all, it's never a good idea to get the, that DHA and EPA from animal sources. It's much better to get it from plants, which also helps us reduce our saturated fat intake significantly. Now, the... the coconut oil story yeah so, please, let's go into detail about this too because coconut yeah. oil is all over the place and oh, i constantly get asked questions yeah. about it. yeah i mean the power of youtube the power of of the one-off anecdote is is so profound that sometimes it bewilders me that there's five thousand papers in one direction with well-founded powerful studies and then one person does one thing and that gets you know blown out of proportion well, coconut oil literally is that, an anecdote of one. A, a pediatrician who gave her husband, who supposedly had Alzheimer's, coconut oil, and supposedly he was cured. And in fact, recently there was another case of something like that, but not coconut oil, something else. One anecdote, and I was seeing it everywhere. It's, it's just a viral phenomenon, but no, with no reality, because nobody ever checked whether he had Alzheimer's and then the husband died and nobody found out that, uh, whether, uh, how he responded. Anecdote of one. Beyond that, there's never, ever been a study that showed that uh, coconut oil was beneficial for the brain as far as Alzheimer's prevention or reversal or any of that. There are some smaller studies that are coming out um, studying components of coconut oil. So, you know, more than 90% of coconut oil is saturated fat, but there is medium chain triglycerides or MCTs in coconut oil that you know seems to be beneficial but the but the data on it is so poor mm -hmm. and the results are so highly exaggerated that it's just unbelievable i mean you go to any health store and you see bottles and bottles of mct oils with such little research behind it so all in all we always tell our patients not to not to take coconut oil or even mct oil i think it's a waste of money because we don't have data of it being beneficial for the brain and then who said that even if, you know, part of coconut oil is MCT to take uh, coconut oil in general, it's like saying, you know, if you want to drink some water, if you're dehydrated, drink Coke because it has water in it. But what about all the other bad stuff in it? Um, so yeah, not a good idea. 